So in this final video on uh, the vertebrate kingdom, we're going to wrap up by looking at um, hybrids and looking at some um, ecological numbers. Hybrids in biology are the offsprings that result from crossbreeding of different plants or animals. This can happen naturally in the environment or it can happen due to um, man intervening. And so what we need to do is we need to look at this and determine um, does man need to interv intervene in um, hybridization? Does it really benefit the animal? Um, is it glorifying God or is it glorifying man? Um, are we doing a, a favor to nature or are we being detrimental? And that's something that you'll need to think about and look over. Uh, but let's look at some examples and then you'll make that determination on your own. Here's my first um, two examples of hybrids. Over on the left, we have a Tigon, and over on the uh, right, we have a Liger. Now, both of these are missing their growth inhibiting factor, and so they grow much larger than a, a typical tiger or a lion. As we look at hybrids, one of the things I want you to be aware of is how they're named. We put the father first, the, the mother second. So in a tigon, the male is a tiger, the female is a lion. On a liger, the male is a lion, the female is a tiger. And so uh, you can see some characteristics here. Again, they grow much larger than their parents that they're hybrids from. Um, moving along, you can see a wolfen. A wolfen is a cross between a uh, false killer whale and a bottlenose dolphin. Here we have a beefalo. It's a cross between a domestic uh, cattle and the American bison. The Bambino cat. This is a hairless cat, isn't he precious? Short-legged. Uh, they were deliberately created and crossed with a sphinx cat and a munchkin, both of which have some genetic abnormalities that allowed the bambino to be created. Now, uh, the munchkin cat, the legs are shorter. The sphinx, you've got the hairless uh, situation. So you've got a, a cat that is prone to sunburn and sun cancer associated with the fact that uh, he has mobility issues with the shortened legs. And here are the munchkin kitty cats. Now the munchkin cats were actually uh, formed from a litter of kittens from Louisiana. They had that abnormality with those very shortened legs. This, while it makes them look cute to some individuals, it does cause a variety of health issues. It causes mobility issues. Ultimately, when you have a genetic condition along these lines, it's going to also cause possibilities of shortened lifespans. Now here's a picture uh, of a cat I took in uh, Key West. Uh, we were visiting the Hemingway house. Uh, my husband was really excited to see where Hemingway did his great works of, of uh, literature. Uh, I was more interested in the cats. Hemingway always kept lots of cats around his home. And this is a descendant of those cats. Uh, the cats that Hemingway kept were polydactyl. And what that means is that they've got these extra toes. So instead of having five toes, they've got six toes. So we did the, um, the tour, and Steve's like, oh, look, Hemingway wrote his, his great uh, work right here. And I'm like, oh, look, polydactyl cat. Took a picture of the cat. Um, but you can uh, zoom in if you want, and you can see that he is polydactyl, uh, many toes, and um, if you ever get to Key West, go check out the kitty cats. Here we have some hybrids uh, that you'll find interesting. You have the zebroids. Uh, the zorse is a cross between a horse and a zebra. The zonkey is going to be a zebra and a donkey, and the zoni is a zebra and a pony. And those of you who are in the Honor Society and we go on our safari trip, you will get to see some of these at the uh, safari down in um, Atlanta. We're right outside of Atlanta. 
and those of you who know me, uh, you know I couldn't put um, together some kind of PowerPoint without a pug. So uh, here we have a puggle, which is a dog hybrid. This is between a pug and a beetle. There's actually lots of hybrid uh, hybridization within the, the dogs. Uh, I just picked the puggle as one example, but there are so many others, the labradoodle, um, and we could go on and on. This is a camera, and he's just absolutely precious looking. You can see right here the size. Uh, parents, you've got a camo and a llama. Now, you'll notice the size difference. This is going to be one of those situations that does not happen naturally on their own. This is going to be due to artificial insemination because of the big difference between the parents. Here we have a leopon. Uh, the leopon is the result of a leopard and a lion crossed. and a little bit different type of Jeep that you would think of if I said the word Jeep. This here is a cross between a sheep and a goat. And maybe you would like to have some featherless chickens. You can genetically engineer chickens to be featherless. Again, are we doing this for God's glory or are we doing this for, for man's glory? We could not possibly do a segment of hybrids without including uh, Columbia's mule, the offspring between a donkey and a horse. Now here we have an unusual cat. It's called a chimera cat. And uh, this is an organism uh, that is genetically its own for fraternal twin. So you have a single organism that's composed of genetically different cells. Uh, they can be uh, male and female organs, they can be two blood types, um, but you'll notice this distinct coloration here that allows us to see that this is a chimera cat. So animals that are chimera are produced by merging multiple fertilized eggs together. This right here is a white gorilla. Uh, this doesn't quite look like it is an albino uh, because of the coloration of the eyes. Typically a true albino animal uh, would have more of the pink colored eyes. I guess occasionally you might see blue, but a true albino you would have the, the missing component of all pigments, so there would be no blue coloration of the eyes. Alright, with this uh, python, we see a pie baldness. Uh, this is a disorder where uh, basically you've got some components of albinoism or lacking of pigments and you've got some areas where the pigmentation is present. You can also see this on various species of um, clownfish. Vitiligo. Um, this occurs in both people and animals. Uh, in people you would see patches of discoloration of skin. Uh, you see areas where they have a loss of pigmentation. Um, you can see the difference in the pigmentation of uh, the dog here. One of the more famous people to uh, suffer from vitiligo was Michael Jackson. And again, this can happen in animals and in humans. In humans, it is this discoloration or this lack of pigmentation that you see. Here we have a brown panda. The panda is brown. Um, it's not clear as far as, as why it appears um, brown, but they think that it's probably due to some kind of genetic mutation and then uh, pairing that with a particular diet causes it to not get the characteristic black coloration that you would see with the pandas. Now here we have the growler bear. The growler bear is a cross between a um, polar bear and a grizzly bear. Now there are 17 roughly confirmed uh, growler bears that are uh, currently in zoos around the United States. However, because of the uh, melting of the ice caps and, and losing some of the ice, we're starting to see polar bears and grizzly bears meeting in nature where they normally would not. And there have been confirmed cases of 
matings between polar bears and grizzly bears out in nature without human intervention resulting in these growler bears. Now the growler bears are larger and much more aggressive than either the polar bears or the grizzly bears. And so these are ones that you would definitely not want to meet in uh, the wild. You can see the darker coloration here associated with the grizzly bear, the lighter with the polar bear. However, some of them, the darker coloration uh, is not present. In this particular one, um, the bear was aggressive. Uh, it had to be taken down um, because it was much larger than what was expected of a polar bear. Genetic tests were done and it was determined that, that that was a growler bear. Here we have some white lions. Again, um, these are not albinos. You can see the coloration within their eyes, uh, but both parents had a recessive trait that prevented uh, the color to be um, shown. And that's called color inhibition. So even though the cats would have received the trait to have the normal um, lion colors because they also received the genetic trait that said color cannot show through, they appear white. Now here we have squintins. Squintins are cats that have a genetic abnormality where their front legs are so incredibly short they cannot use them for walking. So they walk on their hind legs. Uh, walking on their hind legs, uh, in some cases, because their uh, hypoplasia, their shortness of their limbs is so severe, they may not be able to walk. They may have to hop similar to a kangaroo. Individuals thought this was cute, and so they've continued to breed in this genetic abnormality into the cats so that they have this breed of cats because they look cute. We have to look at, do these situations um, help the animals by purposely breeding in abnormalities, abnormalities that cause difficulty within the animals? Um, is this God serving or is this man serving? Are we, we serving man's own heart because, oh, these are cute, I want one of these, regardless of whether the animal struggles to carry on daily activities. Those are things we have to look at with man-made contributions to um, hybridizations of animals. And then finally, I just want to show you some numbers. Here we have the Sumatran tiger. Only 500 to 600 of these tigers are in the wild. And yet, if you on the quarantine had gotten bored and watched Tiger King, you can see that there are so many more that are in captivity by unlicensed individuals and cats being born uh, for profit, uh, being able to um, take these little uh, cubs and have individuals pay to hold them and to, to play with them only to have them put down when they have outgrown their cute phase. We may have individuals that uh, in the future will never see a, a live tiger because they become extinct. Our forest elephants, less than 500,000 in the wild. Our amur leopards, less than 100 in the wild. There's only two species of rhinos and there's less than 60 remaining of those in the wild. Polar bears, less than 2,500 in the wild. The eastern gorillas, less than 5,000. The monk seals are one of the rarest animals in the world. Three different species found within the Mediterranean, Hawaiian, and the Caribbean areas. The Caribbean monk seals are extinct. The Hawaiian and the Mediterranean are both listed as endangered with less than 400 left in the wild. Our hawk-billed turtle population has declined more than 80% in the last 100 years. The Atlantic cod has dropped 60% in the last five years. The Galapagos penguins are the only penguins that are found north of the equator. The Liberian lynx is the world's most endangered feline, less than 100 left in the world. The blue whale, less than 250,000 left in the world. 
uh, the adax or the white antelope, less than 2,000 uh, that live in zoos. And the world's most rarest mammal uh, we're looking at is the uh, vaccarata. And there's only 30 of these left in the world. So what does that mean? That means that uh, we have to be good stewards of God's creation. We have to um, look at the animals and is there a way that we can help with conservation and we make sure that the conservation of the animals is for the animals' rights and not for, um, for human entertainment. That conservation is taking care of the animals where they're not living in very tiny cages but they are, are living in as close of uh, an environmental setup similar to what they would be in the wild as possible where they are receiving proper diet, proper nutrition, proper veterinarian care and we have qualified individuals that are monitoring and helping these animals to reproduce so that we can maintain these species. Um, when I first moved to Tennessee, the very first veterinarian um, I ran across was the veterinarian I had his children in class. Um, this individual was the one that started the um, missionary trip for the juniors many years back. And even up through the point where he had terminal cancer, he was out doing animal conservation, out spreading God's word. And he always had this quote, and I'm going to end my videos with this quote right here. Animals are on the verge of extinction. Proverbs 12.10, a righteous man cares for the needs of his animals. And whether you go into the science field or whatever field you go into that God calls you into, it is our job to be stewards of his creation, to help mankind, to help others in need, and that includes helping the animals.